Okay, so Japan played Portugal uh, today in another autumn international. Interesting lead up to this game. Portugal is still in the hunt for World Cup qualification. Uh, and uh, if they keep playing the way they are, they will qualify. They beat Canada last week. Japan have already, obviously already qualified by virtue of being a quarter finalist in the last World Cup and going unbeaten in their in their pool stage. But they're on a, a bit of a weak run of form. They've lost five in a row. But the scoreline at the end, 38 points to 25 in favour of Japan, suggests the game wasn't as close as it actually was. The second half, the pendulum kept swinging and towards the end, the Japanese were holding on until a last minute try. But the first half, the Japanese were the better side. Uh, they were better disciplined in the first half. Uh, Portugal... Obviously, ball in hand, they're very good at sevens. They've been very, very... That's, that's helped with their international 15s development is the sevens programme they have. And they have very good handling skills. And a fair few of their players play in the French professional league as well. So it's not as if the Portuguese are no hopers in this. They have been to a World Cup, admittedly, quite a few years back now, in 2007. But the Portuguese have a very good setup. This was a very entertaining end-to-end -end game. Um... The Japanese start scoring after just three minutes with a Fafita try, and you're thinking, okay, the Japanese they 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 are ranked tenth in the world. You know, Portugal ranked nineteenth in the world. Strength of opposition that you play against, obviously, has a bearing on that. But they don't kick on. Portugal take the lead. Uh, firstly, through a Marquez penalty, then a Jose Lima try, which is basically great vision from Marquez, the scrum half with a quick tap penalty. Basically, sevens rugby, trying to play at quick pace. Um, 23 minutes, they're leading. Matsuda gets three penalties, which calms the Japanese nerves. And the Portuguese discipline, you can see the more professional Japanese and the, and the, and, and the stronger Japanese are, are, are better disciplined at this point. And the pendulum goes back towards Japan with three penalties to Matsuda. Marquez responds with a penalty of his own. And we're, we're heading towards half-time. And then Japan with Nakano score a try. Uh, from a, from a breakthrough on third, right on the stroke of half time, Matsuda converts. So it's 21 11 at half time. You're thinking, okay, Japan are on the front foot. The pendulum swung now. They've broken the Portuguese resistance. It's going to be a, 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 a comfortable Japanese win in the second half. It wasn't the case. The Japanese discipline completely deserts them in the second half. Two yellow cards in there. Leach, almost from almost in the first few phases after the, the start of the second half, is yellow carded for a high tackle. That then results in wave upon wave of Portuguese pressure on the Japanese try line. Tava scores, the hooker scores a try on 45 minutes from set play. Marquez converts. Him and I responds with a try on 53 minutes. Matsuda converts. There is a forwards dominated try again off, off line out. Wave after wave of pressure on the Japanese line. Uh, I couldn't catch who was the try scorer. Marquez converts again. He's a very, very useful scrum half. I mean, he's 33, but he's very, very useful at scrum half. Um, obviously, we don't get to see a lot of these Portuguese players because they are a, a tier two nation and a lot of their players play in Portugal, but a lot of their players play in France as well. And some of their players today possibly put themselves in the shop window for bigger European clubs. Matsuda gets a penalty on 63 minutes. Uh, at this point, there are six points in it. A converted try would win it for Portugal. And Nakajima, the uh, replacement prop, experienced player, gets a yellow card for a similar tackle that Michael Leach did at the beginning of the half, high tackle. There's obviously a directive. We saw in the Canada-Belgian game a red card for head contact. Uh, there's clearly a directive from World Rugby to referees. Uh, any high tackles, a minimum of yellow card. If there's no mitigating circumstance, headshots, red card. So we get two yellows. Japan are now holding on. The last five minutes was Portugal throwing the kitchen sink at this. They were basically playing sevens rugby with their handling. Um, and Portuguese are very, very good at sevens, which helped develop their, you know, 15 a side game for the 2007 World Cup and beyond. It is that that was their development platform, the sevens circuit. They still throw the ball around like it was sevens. They're throwing everything now at the Japanese. The Japanese obviously are holding on grimly. There's 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 a, a five meter scrum towards the end. Japan do clear their lines, just hack it long. Um, but again, wave after wave, and then they force that final pass, and uh, Yamanaka, the, the, the fullback for Japan, intercepts. He's now playing on the wing at this point, due to being down to 14 players and playing without a fullback. He has the pace to go nearly the length, well, nearly 60 metres uh, on an intercept try, right at full time. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Japan have been on a bit of a wobble, five defeats in a row. Portugal, obviously... 
still involved in World Cup qualifying. Um, so every test match for the Portuguese is important. Uh, whether this you know, is, is just an autumn international or not, they need to keep that momentum up because they're trying to chase down the Georgians in those two European qualifying spots uh, for the World Cup. They are battering down, uh, you know, trying to hunt down the Georgians. They've still got three games to play in World Cup qualifying. Japan, a gutsy win, but their discipline wasn't good enough. And two experienced players giving away yellow cards in Leach Nakajima is not going to go down well with the coaching setup. Um, also, Japan are also a lot of young players, new players coming in midway through a World Cup cycle. Matsuda looks a very, very competent fly half and a very accurate kicker of the ball. Uh, Yamanaka, um, very competent fullback. Uh, Fafita on the wing. Um, sometimes his handling lets him down a little bit, but he runs some really good lines on the Portuguese side. Jose Lima um, is is a young, talented outside centre who could play at a higher level. Marquez, he is 33 now, but where has he been hiding all this time? It's because we don't get to see a lot of, of the Portuguese play. Um, if they make the World Cup, He'll be 35. Will he be still going at that point? Because he was crucial to the Portuguese attack. He was leading them around. That forward pack, their scrum looks pretty solid uh, for a tier two nation scrum. Looks very well drilled. Japan, uh, again, their scrum was, was good. Uh, their discipline is, is generally a sign of a team lacking a bit of confidence. They win the game and it's an important when it breaks that losing streak. Um, but you can see this is a side that, with a lot of changes and, and new combinations, is lacking a little bit of confidence uh, in, in the last five games with that, that losing streak. They break that losing streak, but they've got a tough test coming up against Scotland at Murrayfield next weekend. And that will give us a real indication of, you know, with these squad changes to Japan, these young players, where they they are at. And Portugal, they've obviously got to focus on their World Cup qualifying, but every test is important, is important for this Portuguese side in their development. And they look pretty pretty good for qualification if they keep up if they play the way they play today against higher ranked opposition i think they will qualify for the world cup alongside georgia with the two automatic european uh qualification spots i think there's a couple of playoffs as well for lower ranked european teams so not every team has qualified for the world cup yet there's three tests left uh for portugal that actually mean something in towards world cup qualification japan they've got two years to to settle their lineup um get more players experience and confidence and that scotland game will be interesting uh considering that scotland did lose and scotland japan is is an interesting contest um i would say that the scots are favorites but i wouldn't underestimate this japanese side they've got a bit of confidence now they, there's a lot to work on for the japanese discipline is, is crucial and I think this directive from high tackles from World well, Rugby, we're going to see some more yellow cards um, in both the men's and women's games uh, that are left in the Autumn Internationals before we're done. And I think uh, this directive is here to stay. I was surprised that, you know, they weren't the worst high tackles I've seen. It wasn't as if there was a lot of force in them, but... There is obviously a directive, no head contact, high tackles need to be yellow cards at, at minimum unless there's mitigating circumstances like slipping up or angle of, of tackle. Um, as we saw in the Canada-Belgian game, there was a red card for, again, a very, not the most egregious, but it was head contact. So that directive, I think, is here to stay uh, and we're probably more likely to see more red and yellow cards uh, for the rest of this weekend and next weekend as well. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts below and I'll have some more videos for you very very soon.